Welcome to our PostgreSQL Deep Dive. Today, we're tackling an intriguing question from a developer using PostgreSQL 9.5. They want to know whether to stick with multiple tables for permissions or switch to a polymorphic table structure. Let's break down the scenario. Our viewer has a permissions table and three additional tables for managing many-to-many -many relationships. They frequently run complex SQL queries involving multiple left outer joins and are concerned about performance as their data grows. The viewer is considering a new design with a single polymorphic table to simplify their queries. But the big question remains, which option is better for performance? Should they stick with the four table approach or transition to two? All right, guys, we're back with another technical video. Today, I'll be going through your question, answering it, and hopefully you find your solution that you need. Guys, remember to stay just a little bit crazy like me, and hopefully you get to that resolution. Now, let's continue on to the video. Let's explore the options for managing permissions in PostgreSQL. You currently have a permissions table and three additional tables for many-to-many -many associations. you are considering a polymorphic table approach, which could simplify your structure. This would involve creating a single permissibles table to handle associations. Now, let's compare the two options. The first option with four tables may lead to more complex queries, while the second option with two tables could improve performance and maintainability. Regarding indexing, consider creating an index on permissions.item type to optimize your queries further. This can help speed up lookups based on item type. Finally, running vacuum analyze regularly is essential for maintaining performance in both setups. This command helps PostgreSQL optimize its query planner. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. The user believes that using three tables is a solid choice. SQL databases handle join operations well, and with only 10,000 records, performance shouldn't be an issue. They recommend using proper indexing like B-Tree to ensure fast performance. Testing with sample data can also help evaluate query efficiency. The user expresses concerns about polymorphic tables, highlighting potential issues with data integrity, such as mismatched resource types. They also mention the importance of understanding relationships between tables, suggesting that permissions could be fetched using user IDs. Lastly, they note that in many-to-many -many tables, you don't necessarily need separate IDs. A composite primary key of permission ID and user ID is sufficient. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. To 
optimize your PostgreSQL database, consider denormalizing many-to-many -many relationships by adding a permission field to each of the three tables, user, user group, and company. Store permissions in JSON format for quick read access. This allows for fast select queries while maintaining normalized relationships. You can still manage permissions through the many-to-many -many tables. Implement a trigger to update the denormalized permission field on changes. This approach is effective when select statements are more frequent than insert, update, or delete operations. For a practical example, check out a script I created for MySQL that demonstrates a similar concept. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. Materialized views can significantly speed up your searches in PostgreSQL, especially if your permissions don't change often. However, remember that they need to be updated whenever the underlying data changes. I'll provide an example based on your setup later today, and we can run some benchmarks to see the performance. And that's it guys. I hope this video has helped you find that solution that you're looking for. If it did, please hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, I hope you have a good one. Cheers.